I'll let you hold that. I gotta go talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning and welcome to all of those of you who are visiting us today. Thanks for, for being here. A couple of uh, quick reminders. Uh, the June newsletter is in the Darthex or the, uh, the next quarter's portally, uh, next quarter's portals of prayer. We'll get it straight there. Uh, they're in the Narthex if you want to grab one. A reminder, our May and June mission is the uh, Nothing But Nets, the Malaria Project. There's a thing out there. Um, I think you know about the pyramids. I'll let you read about that. The flower beds, we're looking for some volunteers to help with the flowers. We've got a few people that are expressed interest. What I think we need to do is get all the people that are expressed interest together. So if you're interested in helping with the flowers, let me know. The sign-up sheet for uh, lawn mowing is out there. If you'd like to mow the lawn during the week, we mow weekly until it dries out. Um, graduates, we have a bunch of graduates listed in our bulletin, so see how they're doing. Uh, things are going on there. I've been attending a couple of graduation parties, and, and uh, everybody's getting excited for that. Um, mark your calendars, August 14th. Right? Saturday or Sunday, August 14th, is going to be our annual uh, outdoor worship and church picnic at Prentice Park. So we're working on that. Um, the great thing about that, if you remember from last year, you get to sleep in for an hour because we do the service at 10 instead of at 9. So uh, make sure you do that. We'll get a sign up sheet in the Narthex pretty soon for uh, folks to bring stuff, and we'll go from there. And then, prayer list today, Penny Nelson Newman, Arlene Zimmerman, Dave Jonas, Herman Wartko, Ingrid Brand, Andrea Gunderson, and uh, I'm putting Harold back on the list. He was on the extended prayer list. He's got some stuff going on. So we're gonna keep Harold Larson on the list and uh, keep praying for him. And I think that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Well, as we gather this morning, the Holy Trinity, a time to commemorate and celebrate. It's different than any other recognized time in the church year. Unlike Christmas, Easter, or last week's Pentecost, where we rejoice and reflect upon the action of God for our salvation, Holy Trinity Sunday is a time to rejoice in and reflect upon a doctrine. We gather around our shared confession of God as we know him to be in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Even in the mystery of things we cannot fully understand or comprehend, by our own reason, we trust God's revelation through his word made known to us of who he is and what he has done, that apart from him, there is no other. And... Uh, Please rise for our opening first verse. <laughs> Son and the Holy Spirit. 
through our worship, we will progressively and responsively confess the Athanasian Creed. As the more commonly confessed apostles and Nicene creeds were written and doctrinally accepted according to God's word in defense of the heresies of the time and applicable still today, so also the Athanasian Creed was written and doctrinally approved, accepted to refute false teachings regarding the scripturally revealed identity and work of the one true God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we hold the Catholic faith, the Athanasian Creed refers to Catholic as the true church of all times and all places who faithfully confess the true Christ as Lord and Savior. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. The Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confessing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal, just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty, and yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. You may be seated as we sing our hymn in continuance. rise as we continue with the confession and absolution. As we approach our triune God and gather in his majestic name, we draw near with a true heart and confess our sins. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sin. Have mercy on us, Heavenly Father, 
because of the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon the new path of life, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Adam was, I am. He alone, with the Father and the Spirit, is the one who has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with verse 4. Thou upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one to God, now and forever. reading this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 8. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroad, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries aloud, to you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, 
Then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from a father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for our verse. Alleluia, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by him. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as had been stated above, the trinity in unity, the unity in trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the trinity. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorified myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out into the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated for him 507. As we confess in this creed the work and identity of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with all founded in and supported throughout Christian Scripture, the Athanasian Creed closes with a reminder of judgment and the last day to come. Though reference is made to works, works are not the basis of our salvation. I want to repeat that phrase. Though reference is made to works, works are not the basis of our salvation. Only those who by faith believe in Jesus Christ for salvation are able to do good works in God's sight. And the good works done are fruits of the saving faith in Christ given through the Holy Spirit. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man born from the substance of his mother in this age, perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, 
but by the assumption of the humanity into God, one altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For all the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again and third day from the dead, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. We continue with the finale to Holy, Holy, Holy. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. There's an American author out there by the name of Orson Scott Card. He's a science fiction writer, and he's not a fan of many of the modern science fiction writers and many of the modern science fiction books. And he says what bothers him most is that the heroes of the books and the movies today are often rugged individuals, but they're disconnected. They're disconnected from family or friends. They're going about their adventures on their own. And Card wonders where the hero's husband or wife or children or siblings or school-age friends, where are they to be found? It's not good for man, even a science fiction hero, to be alone. Therefore, through Jesus' dialogue that we heard in our gospel this morning to the unbelieving Jews, on this Holy Trinity Sunday, God reveals his triune nature that we may not be me, but that we may be we with him. Now, unfortunately, in our world today, we prefer to be me, our present culture thrives on individuality, right? It's all about me. Did you know that people are getting married later in life? Very interesting statistic. In 1962, half, half of all 21-year-olds were married. Kind of an interesting number, right? I see some heads nodding out there. 2019, you know what that number was? 8%. Only 8% of the people age 21 have decided to get married. How about the term sheeple? You ever heard the term sheeple? 
Sheeple is a combination of sheep and people. It's a term that's kind of come into usage for an individual that unthinkingly goes with the flow instead of charting or creating his or her own path. Sheeple are those who have lost their individuality and they, they just want to blend in. They want to be a part of the crowd. I don't know if any of you remember when, when Barack Obama suggested that successful businesses come into being thanks to the help of others. Likewise, Hillary Clinton suggested that it takes a village to raise a child. And I don't know if you remember when those things happened, but people were quite indignant. Why do you think that was? Well, it's because we want to believe that we do these things on our own. Me is not better than we. I'm going to try and explain to you today why we is better than me. It's not good to be alone. 400 years ago, the English writer by the name of John Doan, I'm guessing that all of you, or at least most of you, know this guy, or at least part of what he wrote. He wrote a poem about individualism. And I'm guessing that some or most of you know the first little bit of the start, and you probably know or have heard part of the end, and I'm going to read them to you. It starts out this way. No man is an island entirely of itself. Every man is a piece of a continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. And then it concludes, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. No man is an island. When one man dies, it reminds us that humanity is dying. Paul tells us in Romans 6, the wages of sin is death. To be alone is in some ways to die. Now, I don't know if you realize it or not, but God is not a me. Our holy Lord does not reflect this sinful individualism that our world seems to embrace. Because our sin can drive us to be those rugged individuals disconnected from one another. We assume God, too, is kind of a rugged individual. We speak of our Lord as God, him, he, the one. But then what happens? Well, then comes Holy Trinity Sunday. And we squish the three into this one rugged individual. In some mysterious way, kind of like the parts of an apple. You guys have heard that, right? Skin, meat, seeds, or a three-leaf clover, or the phases of water. Ice, water, steam. Our God is also Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And if you want to have a discussion after, we'll talk about how those three comparisons don't work. But if you think back, Genesis chapter 1, we're talking very beginning here. Back in the garden, the Lord said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. If you remember last week when we had the Tower of Babel, what did God say when he went down to check it out? Let us go down and see. Man was created what? Male and female. There are two options. But in marriage, the two become 
once more one. Because it was not good, the Lord said. Why? For man to be alone. God is also a we. The Father begets a son through whom comes the Spirit. The Jews had a really hard time understanding Jesus as the Son of the Father. We heard that in our reading today. They could not let go of their ideas about God. The Muslims have an issue with it. They too struggle with the triunity of God. You're going to hear me quote something I don't think I've ever quoted from the pulpit before. They have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three and there is no God except one. That's from the Quran. Won't be quoting that again. This is why Jesus uses the divine name for himself in scripture today. This is why it was so repulsive to the Jews. Who did Jesus say he was? I am. Before Abraham was, I am. In a mysterious wonder, our Lord is in fact three persons in one divine substance. The Lord is the Father who eternally begets the Son who comes and sends forth the Spirit. In Jesus, we see God for who he really is. Just as Abraham did in his day, we, like Abraham, abide in Jesus' word. The devil would have us be by ourselves, islands. Disconnected, kept apart. The devil tells us that to be like God is to be alone. He tells us that we can be free to do whatever we want, no matter what people are around us. They can be safely ignored in favor of our personal choices, of our personal freedoms. My friends, that is a lie. The word of the Lord is that we know the Father through the Son, who knows the Father perfectly. He is the truth. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. The Father freely sends his Son into the world to redeem us, to redeem you, each and every one of you, and me. The Son willingly gives up his life on the cross to free us. And the Spirit is willingly breathed out that he might live in us. We receive that spirit right there in baptism. We receive it right here when we hear his word. By the power of the spirit, we keep the father's word. This is what it means to have eternal life. And the promise of never tasting death. It's not good to be alone. So Jesus has made us one with the Father by his sacrifice on the cross and by enlivening our faith by sending his Holy Spirit into our hearts. The heroes of the Gospels, unlike the heroes in so much of fiction nowadays, are not alone. Jesus does not stand by himself. He is glorified by his Father, honors him by keeping his word. He turns to us and he invites us to hear the true promises of his Father, to know the Father through his one and only Son. Abraham knew God. 
not as a he, but as a we. And hopefully, now we do as well. How? Through the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you always. From this day forward, from now, and to life in eternity. Amen. And now may that peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, because we already did the Athanasian Creed, we're going to move right into the uh, prayer of the church. You may remain seated as we pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Before Abraham was... You were and are and ever will be, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From you comes all that is from creation to redemption in Jesus Christ. Your grace preserves all things. Grant us continued faith and trust in who you have revealed yourself to be, that we trust in your mercy and rejoice in the forgiveness accomplished for us through all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever uniting Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, join us together in the fellowship with one another and with you. Give us your spirit, that all may confess truly and faithfully your word and live in harmony and of doctrine and life. As we prepare to receive the gifts you have prepared, Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, nourish the faith you give as we gather together in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-sustaining Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you not as we ought, but as we are able, within the frailty of our minds that struggle to understand and hearts that struggle against sin and unbelief. Guard us by your spirit, that we not grow weary nor lose sight of the goal before us. Work in us to display the good works of him who has called us from darkness into his marvelous light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever providing, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have suffered fully the cost of love through the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Give healing and peace to all who are afflicted and give your comfort to the grieving and dying. We lift up those to you who have requested our prayers, especially this day we pray for Penny, Arlene, Dave, Herman, Ingrid, Andrea, Harold, as well as all those on our extended prayer list and those we name now in our hearts. We pray also for those whose needs are known only to you. Give them all that is needful so that they may endure trials confident of your presence and grace, sufficient for every need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, renew us by your word and spirit where we lack love and compassion. Build us up in Christ. When distracted by the temporal things of this world, draw our eyes upon our Savior you have given. Grant your presence and strengthen our trust in your promises made, fulfilled, and yet to come. That we be found faithful at your time and be forever together with those who have gone before us to your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things we pray to you through Jesus Christ, for you live and reign as the triune and eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who always has been and always will be. Amen.
Just a reminder for the offering, there is a basket in the back. You can drop it there. And uh, you can also drop it in the church mailbox outside. You can mail an offering to the church. And if you're technologically inclined, you can download the church app and donate through the app. And as always, thank you for your stewardship. If you would, please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy he was betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given up for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension in heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
strengthen it, preserve you in the truth of it from now until when it's everlasting. If you would, please rise for the post-communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed our spirits, nourished our faith, and forgiven our sins. Bless our days ahead and keep us sanctified in the truth that we remain together as one body in the confession and proclaim of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, Glory Be to the Father.